Hi, this is Brett Ingram, award-winning entrepreneur, and today I want to share with you the smartest way to start a podcast. Podcasting, unless you've been hiding somewhere, as you know, is super popular right now, and it seems to be growing. So despite the fact that there are a ton of podcasts out there, there's still more being started all the time. And it's no doubt when you see the reasons why people want to start a podcast. It's a very easy way and very effective way to connect with people. So if we have a target market or an audience that we really want to serve, really want to be engaged with, it's a great way to be able to do that. It's an easy way to share our message. It's certainly far more effective than things like straight up advertising, where people always, you know, they realize you're trying to sell something. In this case, we can share a message without sort of that baggage. There's a very low startup cost. You know, starting a podcast, ultimately, if you have a decent microphone and a little bit of equipment, there's, you don't really require a lot. There's not really a lot to it in terms of startup cost. And it's actually one of the most consumed media types on the planet. So despite the fact that, you know, social media might get a lot more, you know, views or clicks or whatever it is, in terms of the actual percentage of the media that people consume, podcasts get some of the highest retention rate in that regard. It tends to be a very loyal audience. So once you've built an audience, they tend to keep coming back. They're not as flighty as the social media crew. And obviously, on some level, you can also monetize it. And so there is the ability to monetize a podcast as well. You know, from my personal experience, I just started this podcast about six months ago. And my goal, my strategy, my plan was to sort of share the advice and insight and experiences that I've had over the 17 years I've been doing entrepreneurship and specifically digital marketing, because I know that there's a lot of stuff that had I known along the way, it would have really helped me prevent me from making some mistakes and get to where I wanted to go a lot faster. So I thought, you know, if there's people out there in my situation, I want to help them um, get to where they want to go as fast as possible. And so, um, so about six months in, and it's been a huge learning experience. You know, I was totally green about this. Um, we're about to cross the 500,000 downloads and listens mark. So um, first off, I just want to say thank you so much. A super shout out to you. Thank you for tuning in. I really sincerely appreciate it. Um, the whole reason I'm doing this is for you. And so the fact that people are listening, the fact that people want to hear um, advice and things about entrepreneurship and digital business is um, thrilling to me. It's super exciting and validating because that's what this has been all about to start with. Um, but it's important to understand that I knew nothing when I was getting started. So I had to research all this stuff and figure it out. Yes, I had experience in digital marketing. Yes, I had, you know, experience in entrepreneurship and I was aware of what a podcast was but to be honest I didn't even really listen to any I've listened to pieces of various ones but I don't subscribe to a lot of them and so I didn't have a lot of experience I don't know anybody personally that has a podcast and I had to do all that research myself to figure out how I was going to do it and here's the other thing I was never a social media guy either you know, if I already had a following and then I plug into a podcast, it's easy. You know, these people start a podcast, they're already a celebrity, and then, oh, the podcast is a top, you know, top choice or like a top player in this particular market. Of course it is. They already had a built-in audience. They're not building that organically. I was not in that situation. I had to build this organically from the ground up, from zero listeners, zero following. I was never a social media guy. Ironic, I know, considering I'm in digital marketing. <laughs> But I was mostly a software guy and an affiliate marketing guy. So um, I didn't do a lot of social media. I had accounts set up, but literally had very few followers other than my own friends and stuff like that. And so despite my digital marketing background, I had no following I, you know, to lean on. I had to build it all from scratch. And so I want to share my insights because if you're like me, I, you know, I like to know what I'm doing and I like to know that I'm doing things right. I don't want to work hard only to find out that I was doing it all wrong and that I have to start over. And so even in the six months I've been doing this, I've already made a bunch of mistakes and there are already things that I feel like if I share 
for somebody else who wants to start one, it'll be a lot easier to do it the right way. Now there are going to bound to be mistakes and there are going to bound to be tweaks to whatever we're doing no matter what. But I prefer to at least start with some base knowledge and that's what I did, but obviously um, while I wasn't totally blind, I didn't know what I didn't know. So that said, it's important to acknowledge that we also learn best by doing. So I actually learned more by actually starting it and getting it going than I did from sort of all this set up research. So the research gives you a very low baseline, but you don't want to spend a lot of time on that. You want to spend most of your time on implementation, on getting going. So it's important to take action and to not waste too much time deliberating about this, that, or the other thing. The other thing it's important to understand right out of the gate is we sometimes get in this silo mentality where we think, well, if I start a podcast and then what if I don't like the niche or what if I want to change, I'm stuck to it. Well, you're never stuck. You could change the name of your podcast. You could change the market. You could change the format. I've already changed a bunch of things on mine. It doesn't matter. So um, you can 100% change anything and everything. You want to have a basic idea so you have enough to get going, but then you want to just start. And you'll, and you'll figure it out because you go where the fish are. Whatever's working, right, you follow the winds. You, 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 know, you follow the, the whatever's working. You, you feed those winners and you starve the losers. So based on what I know, know now, and by means I'm still no expert and I'm still learning. This is all still pretty new to me. But I've done a bunch of episodes now. I've been doing this long enough that I can certainly help people out. And since I just started, all the startup stuff is fresh in my mind. You know, sometimes you talk to somebody who's an expert at something and they can't even get back to where you are. You're trying to figure it out, but you're so removed from where they are. It's like in math, right? You're trying to ask some astrophysicist to teach you basic arithmetic. It's so far beyond where they are, they can't even put themselves in your shoes anymore. They can't even relate to the question. And that has always been a frustration with me about learning from experts in various things, is that oftentimes they just skip the first 10 steps and start on step 11 as though you already have this base knowledge. And it's like, no, 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 I need to start from the very beginning so I know what I'm doing. Well, that's what I'm going to do here. So I want to share my insights and tips about how to start a podcast the right way from what I've learned so far. Um, now, there's a ton of advice. So if you start looking and doing some research, word of warning, A, you're going to find a ton of advice, and B, you're going to get confused. Because there's so much different advice. It's so confusing. Everyone's answer is always, it depends. And there's a hundred different answers for every question. A lot of them are opposite each other. So um, let's talk setup first for what we need to get started. And then we'll talk production. And then growth will come last, right? So in order to even do a podcast, you're going to need some stuff just out of the gate to even get started. So the challenge with a podcast is, you know, that we all want to promote it and we want to syndicate it and we want to distribute it everywhere, right? The minute we start shooting episodes, we want them blasted all over the internet so we can build this massive following. We want them on social media. We want them on a blog. We want them on audio. We want video. We want images. But we need to stay more tightly focused than that to begin with. Because if we try to do it all from the start, it's so overwhelming. A, we never get off the launch pad, and B, we're not doing any of the things we're doing right. The smarter approach is to start simple, master it, and then expand out by keep adding another layer. It's exactly what I did, and it's been very effective, and I promise it'll work for you too. So to start off with a podcast, the first thing that we need to do is figure out what our market is, what our scope is. Okay, so what market do we want to serve? What's the scope that we're going in? Now, for this, it's super important that we don't obsess about this, okay? Um, I've seen people spend weeks and weeks and weeks trying to decide and fine-tune their target market just to start. You don't even know if, if the audience is going to like what you have to offer yet. So you could be broad in the beginning, and you could always narrow it down. You know, for me, it's an entrepreneurship podcast. It's part entrepreneurship, part personal development. You know, I like both of those fields, and I believe that they're connected. So mine's sort of a crossover, right? So I'm not all in one, I'm not all in the other, and those are very general. But if I find that, you know, the, the audience certainly wants a particular thing, I'll tweak it and I'll optimize it for that audience so we can definitely get to, you know, the, the information and, um, and content that everybody wants. So in the beginning, you want to start by figuring out what market or scope, 
but don't obsess about it. You know, you're going to do a photography podcast or you're going to do a gardening podcast, whatever it is, figure that out on a general, general level. And then you want to think about your format and your length. Again, we don't want to obsess about this. We're going to be able to tweak it. When I started out, mine were all, I wanted them all sub 15 minutes. The idea was to get it to a point where they were consumable on a commute or a car ride in. And I wanted it to be a daily podcast because that's something that people could digest on a, on a daily basis really easily. And it keeps us connected, me and the audience, and it makes it nimble. So that way I can cover lots of different topics without doing a ton of research for each one, one a week, hoping that it's good. Other people like to do it totally different. They like to research a topic, spend a week or two doing that, and then do one massive episode for an hour or two. If there's no right or wrong. It's what's right for your market. It's what's right for you and what feels right. But you want some idea because one of the things that's really important in a podcast is consistency. So while we can make changes and tweaks, what we don't want to do is a 15 minute episode today, six days later, an hour and a half, three days after that, it's 10 minutes because it confuses people. They don't know what to expect. They don't know what they're getting. So we want to have some idea, but we can dial it in. We can tweak it down the road. I can tell you from my experience in the daily podcast a couple things. Number one, I've ended up extending them out to a little bit over 20 minutes because I find that the 20 minute mark is really the sweet spot. I can get enough content, I can share enough that it makes it valuable and at the same time I can still manage to do it every day. That said, a daily podcast is a ton of work. It's a ton of work. It's hours every day of shooting, editing, all this other stuff. If you're if you're promoting it on lots of different channels. For just the audio itself, it's a little bit easier. And that's the way that we'll start out. But when you grow it to a certain point and you're trying to expand it and promote it, it's a tremendous amount of work to do daily episodes. The other thing is we have to figure out, is it going to be interviews? Is it going to be, you know, talking head dialogue sort of like I do? You know, or are you going to have guests on? Are you going to do certain like little spots every when it's you know wake up Wednesdays or it's you know monotonous Mondays or whatever like are you gonna have certain like little shticks in the middle of your of your spots or whatever and again these are things that you can evolve and you can tweak over time but we want a general idea of what we want to do for format and length you know in terms of how we're going to structure it then we need to come up with a title now the title doesn't have to be anything specific but in general, it's good to have a title that's at least catchy. It can either apply to the niche or apply to the value you're providing, apply to your audience, or it can just be something that you think makes a lot of sense. Um, and then we need a description. The description is basically like a paragraph. It has to keep it really simple. It's just a summary of what it's all about. You want to give people a sense that if they read the description, they would know whether or not they want to subscribe. So for people you want to be able to subscribe, the description should be good enough that they want to click the button and join your podcast. Then you need cover art. That's just the graphic. This can be outsourced on Fiverr for, you know, I think a hundred bucks. I got all my cover art and all my other graphics and extra stuff done. So you, you want cover art for your basic um, thing. And I wouldn't skimp on this. This isn't something that I would try to figure out myself on Photoshop. I'd outsource it to an expert because the cover art is something that everybody's going to see over and over and over again. And so you want it to be super professional, you want it to be striking, and you want it to catch people's attention. Then you need a simple intro and a simple outro. These are just like a five second audio that introduces the, the podcast, it re reiterates the name of it, or you as the host, and it sort of gives the, a really quick encapsulation of, of what it's all about. This shouldn't be more than five to 10 seconds at max, because once you have subscribers and listeners, they're gonna get annoyed if you have a 30 second intro every single episode. So it might be useful in the beginning, but it needs to be really short. The outro is the same thing, but it's a reminder to subscribe and tune in for every episode, that kind of thing. So that's the intro and outro that once we shoot our episodes, we're gonna add the intro to the beginning, the outro to the end, boom, our episode is done. Then, we want to create one trailer episode. This is your flagship episode that, like the description that's text, is an actual audio trailer episode that describes what your podcast is all about, who you are, why you're, you're doing this, 
what it's all about, the benefit people get for being a part of it, those kinds of things. So you want the trailer episode to be, um, it could be short and it could be, uh, you know, just sort of a description thing about where, uh, what your podcast is all about. And that's an audio version that someone's going to be able to watch to decide whether or not they want to subscribe. After you have all of that stuff as sort of the setup, the other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a microphone and a camera. Now the camera's optional for now, um, but I will just give you some tips on both. Microphone, don't skimp on the microphone. You need to have super high professional quality audio. Otherwise, what's going to happen is people are going to tune out. You can have great content. You can have great ideas. You can spend a lot of time on it. If the audio quality is poor, people won't listen. So for $200, you can get like a great USB microphone. Uh, Rode is the brand that I use, R-O-D-E. I love their microphones. Um, I have several of them. And you can get various different kinds of microphones, and you could use those, um, whether it's a desktop microphone or whatever, but you want a high-quality microphone that's going to record high-quality audio. And then we're going to need um, the camera we'll actually cover later, I, I think, is smarter. So for right now, the other thing we're going to need is a hosting platform. So in order to get your podcast out to the world, you need to sign up for one of the hosting platforms. I don't have a particular, uh, the one I'm using right now is Blueberry, uh, but there are several of them. I'm not partial to one over the other in terms of uh, they all have benefits and drawbacks depending on what is important to you. So just do a quick web research and you can find that the hosting platforms that work. The important thing is that they promote it to all the various uh, podcast directories automatically once you upload an episode and that they provide you storage to host your episodes there. And so that's what we're going to do with that. And then the tool that I use for editing for the podcast and actually recording is Riverside, riverside.fm. Again, there are a bunch of tools for this, but it's an online tool and it has a lot of benefits that go beyond. We're not going to cover them all on this episode because this is an intro, but when I, when I do a subsequent episode of follow-up where we get into more about how to grow the podcast, you'll see why Riverside is a really powerful tool because you could do a lot more with it than just the pure audio. It'll do a lot of stuff for you automatically. So once we've got sort of the setup stuff, and don't be overwhelmed by that. It sounds like a big list, but it's actually pretty quick. You could knock all of that stuff out in terms of the setup in a couple of days, really. You know, so it's not that big a deal. Then we need to actually roll it out. Now, the way we're going to roll it out is we aren't going to worry about promotion and all this other stuff. The first thing we have to do is create some content. You know, you aren't going to be able to make a massive uh, splash with one your first episode. There just isn't enough content out there. So what we want to do is create a bunch of episodes. So depending upon the length of your episodes, if they are like mine, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, you could create 10, right? 10 or more episodes. If you're doing an hour, hour and a half, five is, is, is enough because you have to do the research and you have to do it. But you want multiple episodes created in advance. What that's going to do for you is it's going to help you refine the process, optimize the process of scripting an episode, recording an episode, editing an episode, getting used to your voice on microphone, what it sounds like, playing with your inflection and various other things. And it's going to get you comfortable with posting also. You don't need to be perfect here. The mistake a lot of people make at this stage, and it's why they never get going, is there's, they're, they, they think they don't sound good, they obsess about needing the episode to be perfect, they worry about, is, it, is, it, is the content any good? I got news. Most of your early episodes are probably going to stink. Most of mine do. That's totally fine. The idea is you're using it as your learning experience. You want to get stuff out there so you can get it started. And until you start, you can never grow. So the faster we get started, the faster we can grow, the better off we're going to be. So the idea here is don't be perfect, be fast. Once we're comfortable with the audio and we've got this whole process down of being able to shoot an episode, add the intro, add the outro, you know, trim it as we need to, um, you know, so we've edited it and then we publish it and we've got that sort of cycle down to a, to a science. The next step that we want to do is we want to actually add a YouTube channel and we want to do that ASAP. Now, before you get nervous, if you don't like the talking head version and you don't want to be on camera like I am, that's fine. You can make videos that are 
just the text or sort of the, the um, subtitles for what you're saying with background images or stock videos or whatever. That's totally fine. But the power of video is super important because it's great for search engine optimization, search engine rankings, and viral traffic. And so we want to add a video stream to our audio podcast as quickly as possible. That's the number one thing to do once we've got the audio down. Now, if you're comfortable doing video like I am, then you're going to need a quality video camera as well and a simple lighting thing. You can just get a lighting ring from Amazon for like 50 bucks, 75 bucks, and that's enough. You, you can use your same microphone that you record the audio from if you want, and you can use, um, uh, you know, a, I, I, I use the Sony ZV-1 camera, which is an excellent camera. It's not very expensive as far as a professional quality goes. And it, and it shoots, you know, awesome quality video, but you can get any kind of a decent camera. And so um, once you have that stuff, you can record your audio video with good lighting. Super important if you're going to do talking head, that the lighting is really good as well. If you want a teleprompter, um, you can get uh, there are a bunch of apps that work directly on your actual mobile phone, like Parrot um, teleprompter works on your mobile phone. And you can get um, little tiny uh, sort of um, teleprompters that slide right over your camera for like $100 or something like that. And it reflects the, 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 um, the signal from your phone. So you can see the teleprompter as well. So you can even read a script if you need to when you're doing your episodes. So that's what we want to do next. We want to start set up a YouTube channel with the same name as the podcast. Start posting the video versions of all the audio episodes as well. And so that is the first way and what we're going to do to get started. We want to master all of that. We want to then master the YouTube cycle of being able to create these episodes, upload them, and make sure that we can do this stuff on a continuous basis on the schedule we've set for our podcast. Once we have all of that stuff down, we're going to get that stuff mastered. Then we're going to start to add other platforms. We're going to start to add a real website where we can drive traffic to that and have that be the hub for our entire business. And we're going to start real promotion. And I'm going to cover those steps on an upcoming episode. For now, this is the way to get started fast and the way to get started right. So the takeaway here is that podcasts are super popular and a great way to engage with an audience. They do require a lot of work. And there's a learning curve involved too, with lots of moving parts. So if the idea here is just to make an easy buck, Starting a podcast is not the answer. If our motivation is truly to connect with our audience and provide entertainment, education, encouragement, or something of real value, then we should go all in and pour our passion into it. There's a tremendous feeling of satisfaction in sharing what we know and, that, and what we've experienced with others and having that help them or make a difference in their lives.